For Your Excellency, Mr. Tuar Majid bin Thaya, Chairman of Dubai Trade, the leaders of the DP World Global Network, and of course our esteemed business partners. Very good evening and welcome to what is the 8th E-Service Excellence Award Ceremony. Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Richard Dean. I'm a journalist and broadcaster here in Dubai. I present the Business Breakfast Radio Show on Dubai i 103.8, and it is my pleasure and my privilege to be your host for the eighth edition of these awards. On behalf of Dubai Trade, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to tonight's gathering. And I have to say, personally, as a business journalist who's been covering Dubai and the region since the late 1990s, this is a very special event. Let me explain why. For the past two decades or so, I've been covering business stories for Reuters, the Financial Times, The Economist, and of course my current role, presenting the Business Breakfast radio show. The two stories over those two decades have come up time and time again, and those two stories meet here this evening. They are the trade story, and they are the technology story. And the trade story in particular reminds me of the, the very first day I arrived in Dubai. It was November 1998. I was a young reporter from England, never been in the Middle East before. And my editor at Gulf Business Magazine said to me, do you want to know what makes Dubai as a business city tick? And I said, yes, boss, I do. And he said, well, what you need to do is this, because you won't find that in a five-star hotel, and you won't find it in a fancy office block. Get yourself in a taxi, go down to Jebel Ali, and have a look at the scale of what's going on, because that is what makes Dubai tick. And you know what? He was absolutely right. And the technology story reminds me of the same editor a year later, and another assignment he gave me, to go and cover an announcement. And that was the announcement of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid announcing that he was going to build an internet city on an empty plot of sand opposite Emirates Golf Club. And my editor said to me at the time, he said, you know what? I think Dubai's serious about this whole technology thing. And he was right again. Absolutely right. Because tonight, here at the E-Service Excellence Awards, those two worlds collide. And they collide beautifully, working in perfect harmony, trade and technology. And the reason we're here this evening is to reward and to recognize people, the individuals, and the organizations who are making that happen. So let's show our appreciation to everyone who's done that. I think you've been giving me plenty of stories to sink my teeth into over the past 20 years and hopefully for many years to come. Now, this is my first time attending the ESEA, but it's been clear to me over the past few weeks, working with Mahmoud al Mustaki and the team, that this is a very prestigious award ceremony. And it's continued to evolve every single year, and indeed, this year is no exception. This year, the eighth ESEA has unveiled three brand new award categories. They are Smart Service Awards, Innovation Awards, and also Dubai Export Awards. We'll hand all those out shortly, and we'll explain how they work. But let me start by thanking some very important people this evening, and they are, of course, our sponsors. First of all, our gold sponsors, thanks to Alcatel Logistics and to TechnoPro Middle East. Thank you very much indeed. Our silver sponsors as well, we extend our heartfelt thanks. Agility Logistics, also New Age Software Solutions. Thank you very much indeed to you. And finally, to our category sponsors this evening, Glow Link Westar, Vibrant Freight, and Itchcape Shipping. Thank you very much indeed to you. And of course, special appreciation to our supporters and our media partners for being here this evening. So, Your Excellency, distinguished guests, we hope you're going to enjoy a very special evening this evening. We've planned it so there won't be a dull moment. There'll be plenty of surprises along the way as well. And if the awards and the recognition and the drama that that entails isn't enough, here's something for you. We have got a number of very special prizes to hand out this evening. We'll be handing them out at the end of this evening, at right about 9.30, 9.45. But if you want to win one of those prizes, you have to put your business card in the glass bowl. Now, I know there was a bowl out there a little bit earlier on. People will be passing it around later on. There are plenty of hostesses. You can ask me, where do you put your business card? But if your card isn't in the bowl, 
You're not going to be walking home with one of these fabulous prizes. A word of warning, I'll mention that again. Now, the awards, the most important part. We're going to present the first of those awards very, very shortly. Before that, though, this is really important. You're going to like this. You're going to love this video. We're going to take a sneak peek behind the scenes of Dubai Trade to learn a little bit more about the people who, in many ways, make it all happen. We had a long journey of 
Et il commence à faire. Allah t'a pas fait. Allah t'a fait. Work behind the success that we are witnessing today. But whatever we do, we don't do anything that go outside what our customers want. Simply, the concept which we have adopted a long time back in Dubai, on the transformation from the government services to the semi-government services. But it was a survival decision that we should do something different. I was involved personally in this mission for the last 20 years with the e-commerce. And I am very proud of my team who made it at the end a reality. And we have gone beyond our achievement to look into the changes and innovations. And just let me give you a flavor, ladies and gentlemen, about the challenges which we have faced a long time back. The e-commerce that you have seen, we wanted to create a platform of a customer base that's calling you Dubai. Dubai is not something normal in the Middle East. You need to cater for something totally different to cope with the sheer size of the trade that do exist here in Dubai and in the Americas. If you look at Jabal Ali today with a capacity of 19.5 million, it will not make any sense for you to establish a logical relationship between the population and the volume that we're handling in Dubai. Jabal Ali is close to 17 million containers a year. That's the size of our operation. It's one among us, the top five in terms of a single operation. And ladies and gentlemen, don't be misled by the huge number that you read in China, Shanghai, uh, Singapore, and the rest. Japan Ali is a single window and a single operation that handles 17 million containers. Unlike Shanghai, for example, where most of the container terminals, they are scattered all around. It's not one single window. So the question now, and at that time we asked ourselves, is it possible that we will be handling this much of containers without a supporting system? And the answer it was only one, it was the innovation and technology. There was a huge amount of pressure that sits on our infrastructure in Dubai today. Cars? How many cars we need to absorb? in Jabalali every day for the consignees and the shippers to come to our documentation department and clear their documents. If you can imagine the millions of containers that we're handling in Jabalali, the consignees and the shippers, with their messengers holding documents with the queue, the indirect indirect result of Dubai trade on facilitating the trade is a huge. There was, ladies and gentlemen, to give you a fact about one simple item. It was the deadlock in the whole system. It was the payment. The payment was an obstacle for some times. And I was very impressed with Dubai government legal department that they have reacted swiftly to introduce the cyber law. The cyber law allows us to pay online. At that time, there was, it was not possible, ladies and gentlemen, to just to pay online. It was extremely difficult to allow a huge transaction in billions of dirhams online. So the mission of the e-commerce and Dubai trade is what, is what was not something easy that one would imagine, that there is a portal and 
the trade will only connect to Jabal Ali and the ports through the Dubai trade. But it was a huge amount of work, the legal work outside Dubai trade and outside our boundaries with the consignees, the shipping agent, the shipping line, the stakeholders that has only result into the end product of what we have today. I used to question Mahmoud in each and single management meeting. I don't want to see one single car in Jabal Ali. No consignee, no shipper. Until we achieved over 95% of e-commerce adaptation. And we kept one small counter for the special cases in case someone coming from Alain or from far or from Saudi Arabia to clear his cars, etc.